Hi there, uh, this tutorial is a follow-up to my previous tutorial that I did about digital inking. Um, this one I'm going to go through and show you how to add colour to the uh, vectored inks. Um, if you haven't seen the previous one, I advise that you go through and watch that one first, otherwise uh, the, the, some of the techniques used in this uh, tutorial probably won't work so well for you, unless the lineup's set up in a particular way. So yeah, um, I'll add a link so you can watch that one first if you haven't, and uh, if you have, well, let's get to it. All right. So first off, we're going to make want to make sure that the um, the line art is all closed, and we've got areas within it that's all closed off. Otherwise, this technique of, technique of coloring isn't going to work so great. So um, to demonstrate, I'm just going to zoom in here into the button, which I know has an open gap. So as you can see there, that there is a little gap there, and this this would um, cause us to be in a, unable to select the button buttons color individually from the shirt selecting that will just result in selecting the entire area of the shirt so what we're going to do is just repeat the last step from the um, previous tutorial and just draw a line over that expand it out and then merge it in with our existing liner and clean it up so to do this we're just going to grab the brush tool and we're just going to make sure we have that same brush from the previous tutorial and I'm just going to lightly draw a line over that like so um, and now I'm just going to come up and expand appearance, expand that line, and then I'm going to select everything with that line, so just control A, um, and just merge those two together like so. And again, because we've got the question mark there, we'll come back with our color information here on the full. Uh, we're just going to go object, path, clean up, and just hit OK, and now clean it up again. So yeah, you want to go ahead and do that with every open gap that you find. Um, you don't have to do it individually like that. You can just draw out all your lines and then select all your lines together and expand them. But uh, yeah, you just want to make sure that all the areas are closed off. All right, so once you've closed off all the line art, um, we're just going to draw a rectangle over the top of our skeleton dude here. So I'm just going to select the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a rectangle over the top of them like so. Now I'm making sure that you have no stroke on this rectangle and we're just going to change the full color to what color we want well the most common color that's going to be in them so I'm going to just choose a, a darker gray here and I'm going to send that square to the back by pressing Control shift uh, left square bracket on the keyboard and then I'm going to select everything by pressing Control a and we're just going to merge them all together using the Pathfinder tool here so we're just going to hit the merge button right here um, now I'm going to deselect him, uh, deselect everything by pressing Control Shift A, and we're just going to pick out our white pointer tool, and just select the background here because we don't want that anymore, and just hit Delete. So now we have our skeleton all coloured in grey. All right, so our next step now is to separate or extract the line art from this grouped object here. So um, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use our magic wand tool. And we're just going to come down and um, click on one of the black lines here. And what they'll do is they'll select out everything that is the same as that black line. So in theory it should just pick out all the black lines and objects and whatnot. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to group those together by pressing Ctrl G. And if you come down to your layer down the side here, you're going to notice that you're going to have a group within a group within a whole bunch of paths and everything. This group here is going to be our line art. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to ungroup this one here and that should separate our line art from all the other um, colored paths. So to do this what we're going to do is we're just going to select everything by pressing Control A and we're just going to come up the top here and go Object Ungroup like so. And just using our pointer tool we'll be able to see if we've moved our lines from our colors and we have. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to stick our line out onto a separate layer and lock it off so we can't touch anymore and then we'll be able to select out the colors individually. So to do this what we're just going to do here is we're going to come down and we're going to click new layer. I'm just going to name this one line art so I can keep track of what it is and we're just going to drop this arrow down here and grab our grouped line art and just drag it up and throw it into the line art there and pull the arrow up then just hit the little padlock next to our line up and now lock it up so now we can't select our lines but you also notice now is that we can pick out the colors individually with our pointer tool and the first part of this process is simply going through and just coloring all those individual areas the mid-tone that you want
Alright, so that's my colours put down. Now it's just an easy process of selecting out the in individual areas and just adding colour to them. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some shadow to the um, the uh, drawing uh, using the brush tool. So pretty much we're just going to set up the brush tool like we did in the previous tutorial, just with a bigger brush, and we're just going to go ahead and paint some shadow on. Um, first off, what we're going to do though is we're going to add a new layer in between the line art and the layer 2 there, and I'm just going to name that shadows and we're just going to lock off the flat colors at the bottom there so we can't mess them up and um, now we're going to come up to our brush palette and we're just going to double click on this bigger brush here and we're just going to add some pressure line variation to it and I'm going to bring it up to about five we'll just see what that works how that works and we're just going to hit OK Alright, so I'm just going to choose a suitable colour for the brush. Um, so I'm just going to come up here, I'm just going to turn the fill off. I'm just going to stroke, and I'm going to put in 95%. And yeah, pretty much it's just a process of painting in the shadows that you want, like so. Very similar to drawing the line art, just with a thicker brush this time, and yeah. Alright, so now I've finished off doing all the shadows and everything, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to start doing the same process again, but with um, some highlights in that, just to make the um, image stand out from the page a bit more. At the moment it's pretty flat and dull, so adding highlights will definitely make the image jump out of the page a bit more. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a new layer above our shadows layer, and I'm just going to name this one Highlights. And again, it's just the same process with the brush tool, except we're going to be using lighter colours on top of it. Alright, so we just, first off we want to do is probably lock our shadows there so we can't touch it. And we'll just get our brush tool again. I'm going to grab a light grey and we're going to come up to the head here and we'll just work our way down, I guess. You can also build highlights up on top of it, for instance, just by changing the colour. I'll choose a white scene, that probably stand out a bit more. You see, you don't have to just have the same highlight throughout the entire image. You can build highlights up on it, on it. it doesn't really matter. Alright, so there you have it, the finished product. Um, obviously this is going to be a process of just uh, figuring out what works best for you. Um, a lot of people prefer to do this sort of thing in Photoshop. Um, Photoshop painting does produce a completely different result, whereas in Illustrator you're kind of limited to a more flat colour look, even cartoony look. But um, the advantage of uh, doing line art and uh, colouring in Illustrator is you can blow this image up to whatever size you want. Um, whereas in Photoshop you're going to be obviously limited to um, how far the image will go about being pixelated or the initial resolution which you uh, draw it on. Whereas in Illustrator you can draw this image really small and blow it up to whatever damn size you want. The um, vectors will scale up to anything that you need to print, which is cool. Which means you can potentially just draw something on an A4 page and then blow it up to an a A1 poster if you really wanted to. But uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my tutorial. Uh, if you found it helpful, uh, feel free to hit the like button. Also subscribe. I will be posting more tutorials, tutorials in the future. And uh, yeah, have a nice day.